Introduction The breakdown of communism in the late 1980s and 1990s appeared to confirm what numerous individuals have, since quite a while ago, trusted that capitalism is the regular state of humankind, that it conforms to the laws of nature and essential human slants, and that any deviation from those normal laws and slants can just end up badly. There are obviously numerous reasons today to question the industrialist triumphalism that followed in the wake of the breakdown. While I was composing the prologue to the first release of this book, the world was all the while reeling from the Asian emergency. Today, the financial pages of the day-by-day -day press are anxiously watching the indications of retreat in the US and rediscovering the old industrialist cycles that they had been guaranteeing us were a relic of days gone by. The period between these two scenes has been punctuated in different parts of the world by a progression of sensational shows that gladly portray themselves as hostile to entrepreneur and while numerous members appear to be slanted to separate the shades of malice of globalization or neoliberalism from the crucial and irreducible nature of capitalism itself, they are clear about the contention between the necessities of individuals and the prerequisites of profit, as showed in everything from the developing crevice in the middle of rich and poor to expanding natural demolition. Previously, capitalism has dependably hauled out of its intermittent emergencies, however never without establishing a framework for new and far and away more terrible ones. Whatever methods have been found to restrain or remedy the harm, the same numbers of a great many individuals have frequently experienced the cure as from the sickness. The undeniably straightforward shortcomings and disagreements in the entrepreneurial framework might in the end persuade even some of its more uncritical supporters that an option should be found. In any case, the conviction that there is and can be no option is profoundly established, particularly in Western society. That conviction is upheld not just by the more explicit articulations of entrepreneur philosophy, additionally by some of our most appreciated and unchallenged beliefs about history. Not simply the historical backdrop of free enterprise, however history as a rule. It is as though capitalism has dependably been the destination of record development and, more than that, the development of history itself has, from the earliest starting point, been driven by entrepreneur laws of movement. Getting it right Capitalism is a framework in which products, services, merchandise and administrations, down to the most fundamental necessities of life, are delivered for productive trade, where even human workforce is an item available to be purchased in the business sector, and where every financial performing artist are reliant available. This is genuine not just of specialists who must offer their work power for compensation, additionally of entrepreneurs who rely on upon the business sector to purchase their inputs, including work power, and to offer their yield for benefit. Free enterprise varies from other social structures since makers rely on upon the business sector for access to the method for generation. Dissimilar to, for case, workers who stay in direct, non-market ownership of area. While appropriators can't depend on additional financial forces of assignment by method for direct compulsion. For example, the military, political and legal forces that empower primitive rulers to concentrate surplus work from labourers, however should rely on upon the absolutely financial systems of the business sector. This unmistakable arrangement of business sector reliance implies that the necessities of rivalry and benefit amplification are the basic standards of life. Due to those tenets, free enterprise is a framework particularly headed to enhance the efficiency of labour by specialised means. Most importantly, it is a framework in which the main part of society's work is finished by workers with no properties of their own, who are obliged to offer their work power in return for a pay with a specific end goal to access the method forever and of work itself.
During the times spent supplying the requirements and needs of society, specialists are in the meantime and indistinguishably making benefits for the individuals who purchase their work power. Truth be told, the creation of merchandise and administrations is subordinate to the generation of capital and entrepreneur benefit. The fundamental goal of the industrialist framework, as it were, is the creation and self-extension of capital. This method of supplying the material needs of individuals so altogether different from every single going-before method for sorting out material life and social generation has existed for a brief time frame, scarcely a small amount of mankind's presence on earth. Indeed, even the individuals who most determinedly demand the framework's roots in human instinct and its normal coherence with age-old human practices would not guarantee that it truly existed before the early current period and after that just in Western Europe. They might see bits of it in prior periods or distinguish its beginnings in the Middle Ages as an approaching danger to declining feudalism yet at the same time obliged by primitive limitations or they might say that it started with the development of exchange or with voyages of disclosure, with, say, Columbus investigations toward the end of the 15th century. Some may call these early structures proto-capitalism, yet few would say that the industrialist framework existed vigorously before the 16th or 17th century and some would put it as late as the 18th, or maybe even the 19th, when it developed into its modern structure. The Origins of Capitalism Yet incomprehensibly chronicled records of how this framework appeared have commonly regarded it as the normal acknowledgement of ever-present propensities. Since antiquarians first started clarifying the development of free enterprise, there has hardly existed a clarification that did not start by expecting the very thing that should have been clarified. Just about regardless, records of the root of free enterprise have been generally roundabout. They have accepted the earlier presence of capitalism so as to clarify its appearing. Keeping in mind the end goal to disclose capitalism's unmistakable drive to boost benefit, they have presupposed the presence of a general benefit amplifying sanity. With a specific end goal to clarify free enterprise's drive to enhance work efficiency by specialised means, they have likewise presupposed a persistent, verging on regular, advancement in mechanical change in the profitability of work. These inquiry-asking clarifications have their beginnings in established political economy and enlightenment originations of advancement. Together, they give a record of verifiable improvement in which the rise and development to development of free enterprise are, as of now, prefigured in the most punctual indications of human discernment, in the mechanical advances that started when Homo sapiens initially wielded a device, and in the demonstration of trade individuals have honed since the immemorial. History's excursion to that last destination, to business society or free enterprise, has no doubt been long and challenging, and numerous snags have remained in its direction. Be that as it may, its encouraging has in any case been common and inescapable. Nothing more is obliged, then, to clarify the ascent of capitalism than a record of how the numerous impediments to its forward development have been lifted some of the time, step by step, in some cases all of a sudden, with progressive brutality. In many records of capitalism and its starting point, there truly is no inception. Free enterprise appears to be dependably to be there, some place, and it just should be discharged from its chains, for example, from the shackles of feudalism, to be permitted to develop and develop. Normally, these shackles are political. The parasitic forces of lordship or the limitations of a dictatorial state. Some of the time, they are social or ideological, maybe the wrong religion. The financial in these details is related to trade or markets and it is here that we can identify the presumption that the seeds of free enterprise are contained in the most primitive demonstrations of trade, 
in any form of exchange or market movement. That suspicion is regularly associated with the other presupposition, that history has been a practically common procedure of innovative improvement. Somehow, capitalism pretty much normally shows up when and where extending markets and innovative improvement achieve the right level, permitting adequate riches to be aggregated with a goal that it can be gainfully reinvested. Numerous Marxist clarifications are on a very basic level the same, with the expansion of common transformations to break the shackles. Chance or Necessity in the great model, then, capitalism is a chance to be taken wherever and at whatever point conceivable. This idea of opportunity is completely basic to the tradition comprehension of the entrepreneur framework, display even in our ordinary dialect. Consider normal use of the word that lies at the very heart of free enterprise. The business sector, which hints an open door, as a solid religion or establishment, a business sector is a spot where opportunities exist to purchase and offer. As a reflection, a business sector is the likelihood of offer. Products discover a business sector. Products discover a business sector, and we say there is a business opportunity for an administration or item when there is an interest for it, which implies it can also will be sold. Markets are open to the individuals who need to offer. The business sector speaks to conditions as respects, open door for, purchasing and offering. The business sector infers offering and decision. What then are business sector strengths? Doesn't power infer intimidation? In industrialist belief system, the business sector infers not impulse, but rather opportunity. In the meantime, this flexibility is ensured by specific components that guarantee a level-headed economy, where supply takes care of demand, putting on offer items and administrations that individuals will uninhibitedly pick. These mechanisms are the generic strengths of the business sector, and in the event that they are in any capacity core receive, it is just in the feeling that they force monetary performing artists to act reasonably in order to expand decision and opportunity. This infers capitalism, a definitive business sector society, is the ideal state of opportunity and decision. More merchandise and administrations are on offer, more individuals are all the more allowed to offer and benefit from them and more individuals are all the more allowed to pick among and purchase them. So what isn't right with this origination? A communist is prone to say that the major missing fixing is the commoditization of work power and class abuse. Not too bad up until now. Be that as it may, what may not generally be so clear, even in communist records of the business sector, is that the particular and prevailing normal for the industrialist business sector is not opportunity or decision, but rather, despite what might be expected, impulse. Material life and social proliferation in capitalism are generally intervened by the business sector, so that all people must in somehow go into business sector relations, keeping in mind the end goal to access the method forever. This interesting arrangement of market dependence implies that the directs of the industrialist market, its objectives of rivalry, collection, benefit augmentation and expanding work profitability, control every single financial exchange as well as social relations when all is said and done. As relations among individuals are intervened by the procedure of item trade, Social relations among individuals show up as relations among things, the fetishism of wares in Marx's well-known expression. Authorised Commerce Companies The Muscovy Company was the principal major contracted joint stock English exchanging organization set up in 1555 with restraining infrastructure on exchange in the middle of England and Muscovy. 
It was a branch of the Pra Company of Merchant Adventurers to New Lands, established in 1551 by Richard Chancellor, Sebastian Cabot and Sir Hugh Willoughby to find the northeast passage to China to permit exchange. This was antecedent to a sort of business that would soon prosper in England, the Dutch Republic and somewhere else. The British East India Company, 1600, and the Dutch East and the Dutch East India Company, 1602, dispatched a time of expansive state contracted exchanging organizations. These organizations were described by their restraining infrastructure on exchange, conceded by letters patent gave by the state. Perceived as sanctioned business entities by the state, these organizations consisted of force running from lawmaking, military and settlement-making benefits. Portrayed by its provincial and expansionary powers by states, intense country states tried to amass valuable metals and military clashes emerged. Amid this time, shippers who had already exchanged all alone put capital in the East India companies and different settlements looking for an arrival on venture. Industrial Capitalism Another gathering of financial scholars, drove by David Hume and Adam Smith in the mid-18th century, tested major mercantilist conventions, for example, the conviction that the measure of the world's richest stayed steady and that a state could just expand its riches to the detriment of another state. Amid the Industrial Revolution, the industrialist supplanted the shipper as a predominant variable in the entrepreneur framework and influenced the decrease of the customary craftsmanship aptitudes of artisans, societies and understudies. Additionally, amid this period, the surplus produced by the ascent of business horticulture empowered expanded motorization of farming. Mechanical capitalism denoted the improvement of the industrial facility arrangement of assembling, portrayed by a mind-boggling division of work between and inside of work procedure and the routine of work undertakings. Lastly, settled the worldwide mastery of the entrepreneur method of generation. England likewise deserted its protectionist approach, as grasped by mercantilism. John Bright and Richard Copton, who constructed their convictions in light of the Manchester School, started a development to lower duties in the 19th century. In the 1840s, Britain received a less protectionist strategy with the nullification of the Corn Laws and the Navigation Acts. England decreased taxes and standards in accordance with David Ricardo's support with the expectation of complementary exchange. Industrial Revolution the profitability additions of entrepreneur creation started a maintained and remarkable increment at the turn of the 19th century in a procedure generally alluded to as the industrial transformation. Beginning in around 1760 in England, there was a relentless move to new assembling forms in an assortment of commercial ventures, including going from hand generation strategies to machine creation new compound assembling and iron generation forms, enhanced proficiency of water power, the expanding utilization of steam force and the advancement of machine instruments. It additionally incorporated the change from wood and other biopowers to coal. In material assembling, motorized cotton turning fueled by steam or water expanded the yield of a labourer by a variable of around 1,000 because of the use of James Hargreaves' turning jenny, Richard Awkward's water outline, Samuel Crompton's spinning mule and different creations. The force loom expanded the yield of a labourer by an element of more than 40. The cotton gin expanded efficiency or expelling seed from cotton by an element of 50. Extensive increases in efficiency likewise happened in turning and weaving of fleece and cloth. Yet they were not as incredible as in cotton. Industrial Capitalism Another gathering of financial scholars 
drove by David Hume and Adam Smith in the mid-18th century, tested major mercantilist conventions, for example, the conviction that the measure of the world's richest stayed steady and that a state could just expand its riches to the detriment of another state. Amid the Industrial Revolution, the industrialist supplanted the shipper as a predominant variable in the entrepreneurial framework and influenced the decrease of the customary craftsmanship aptitudes of artisans, societies and understudies. Additionally, amid this period, the surplus produced by the ascent of business horticulture empowered expanded motorization of farming. Mechanical capitalism denoted the improvement of the industrial facility arrangement of assembling, portrayed by a mind-boggling division of work between and inside of work procedure and the routine of work undertakings. Lastly, settled the worldwide mastery of the entrepreneur method of generation. England likewise deserted its protectionist approach, as grasped by mercantilism. John Bright and Richard Copton, who constructed their convictions in light of the Manchester School, started a development to lower duties in the 19th century. In the 1840s, Britain received a less protectionist strategy with the nullification of the Corn Laws and the Navigation Acts. England decreased taxes and standards in accordance with David Ricardo's support with the expectation of complementary exchange. Industrial Revolution the profitability additions of entrepreneur creation started a maintained and remarkable increment at the turn of the 19th century in a procedure generally alluded to as the industrial transformation. Beginning in around 1760 in England, there was a relentless move to new assembling forms in an assortment of commercial ventures, including going from hand generation strategies to machine creation new compound assembling and iron generation forms, enhanced proficiency of water power, the expanding utilization of steam force and the advancement of machine instruments. It additionally incorporated the change from wood and other biopowers to coal. In material assembling, motorized cotton turning fueled by steam or water expanded the yield of a labourer by a variable of around 1,000 because of the use of James Hargraves' turning jenny, Richard Awkward's water outline, Samuel Crompton's spinning mule and different creations. The force loom expanded the yield of a labourer by an element of more than 40. The cotton gin expanded efficiency or expelling seed from cotton by an element of 50. Extensive increases in efficiency likewise happened in turning and weaving of fleece and cloth. Yet they were not as incredible as in cotton. Keynesianism and the Free Markets Keynesian financial aspects turned into a generally acknowledged technique for government regulation and nations. For example, the United Kingdom explored different avenues regarding blended economies in which the state possessed and worked certain significant businesses. An expansive exhibit of new logical apparatuses in the sociologies was created to clarify the social and financial patterns of the period, including the ideas of post-mechanical society and the welfare state. The long after war blast finished in the 1970s in the midst of the financial emergencies experienced after the 1973 oil emergency. The stagflation of the 1970s drove numerous financial pundits and lawmakers to grasp market arranged approach solutions propelled by the free enterprise capitalism and established progressivism of the 19th century, especially affected by Friedrich Hayek and Milton Friedman. The hypothetical different option for Keynesianism was better with free capitalism and stressed fast development of the economy. Market arranged deals increased expanding support, especially in the industrialist area, mainly under the authority of Ronald Reagan in the United States and Margaret Thatcher in the UK in the 1980s. 
open and political premiums started moving far from the supposed collectivist worries of Keynes overseeing free enterprise to an emphasis on individual decision called remarketized capitalism. According to numerous monetary and political reporters, the breakdown of the Soviet Union brought additional proof of the predominance of business sector capitalism of a ranged economy. Globalization After the surrender of the Bretton Woods framework in 1971 and the strict state control of outside trade rates, the aggregate estimation of exchanges in remote trade was evaluated to be no less than 20 times more prominent than that of every remote development of products and administrations, EB. The internationalization of fund, which some see as past the span of state control, consolidated without any difficulty with which extensive companies have possessed the capacity to move their operations to low-wage states, has offered the conversation starter of the overshadowing of state sway emerging from the developing globalization of capital. While financial analysts by and large concur about the span of worldwide wage disparity, there is a general difference about the late heading of progress of it. In cases, for example, China, where pay balance is obviously developing, it is additionally clear that general monetary development has quickly expanded with industrialist changes. The book The Improving State of the World contends that monetary development since the Industrial Revolution has been exceptionally solid and that components, for example, satisfactory sustenance, future, baby mortality, proficiency, commonness of tight work, training and accessible available time have enhanced extraordinarily. A few researchers battle that globalization and neoliberal financial strategies are not enhancing imbalance and destitution but rather compounding it, and are extending populaces of the dislodged, the unemployed and the detained alongside quickening the pulverization of nature. Capitalism is a framework in which products, services, merchandise and administrations, down to the most fundamental necessities of life, are delivered for productive trade where even human workforce is an item available to be purchased in the business sector and where every financial performing artist are reliant available. This is genuine not just of specialists who must offer their work power for compensation, additionally of entrepreneurs who rely on upon the business sector to purchase their inputs, including work power, and to offer their yield for benefit. Free enterprise varies from other social structures since makers rely on upon the business sector for access to the method for generation, dissimilar to, for case, workers who stay in direct, non-market ownership of area. While appropriators can't depend on additional financial forces of assignment by method for direct compulsion, for example, these two scenes has been punctuated in different parts of the world by a progression of sensational shows that gladly portray themselves as hostile to entrepreneur and, while numerous members appear to be slanted, to separate the shades of malice of globalization or neoliberalism from the crucial and irreducible nature of capitalism itself, they are clear about the contention between the necessities of individuals and the prerequisites of profit as showed in everything from the developing crevice in the middle of rich and poor to expanding natural demolition. Previously, capitalism has dependably hauled out of its intermittent emergencies, however never without establishing a framework for new and far and away more terrible ones. Whatever methods have been found to restrain or remedy the harm, the same numbers of a great many individuals have frequently experienced the cure as from the sickness. The undeniably straightforward shortcomings and disagreements in the entrepreneurial framework might in the end persuade even some of its more uncritical supporters that an option should be found. In any case, the conviction that there is and can be no option is profoundly established, particularly in Western society. 
That conviction is upheld not just by the more explicit articulations of entrepreneur philosophy, additionally by some of our most appreciated and unchallenged beliefs about history. Not simply the historical backdrop of free enterprise, however history as a rule. It is as though capitalism has dependably been the destination of record development, and more than that, the development of history itself has from the earliest starting point been driven by entrepreneur laws of movement. Getting it right Introduction the breakdown of communism in the late 1980s and 1990s appeared to confirm what numerous individuals have, since quite a while ago, trusted, that capitalism is the regular state of humankind, that it conforms to the laws of nature and essential human slants, and that any deviation from those normal laws and slants can just end up badly. There are obviously numerous reasons today to question the industrialist triumphalism that followed in the wake of the breakdown. While I was composing the prologue to the first release of this book, the world was all the while reeling from the Asian emergency. Today, the financial pages of the day-by-day -day press are anxiously watching the indications of retreat in the US and rediscovering the old industrialist cycles that they had been guaranteeing us were a relic of days gone by. The period between for example, the military, political and legal forces that empower primitive rulers to concentrate surplus work from labourers, however should rely on upon the absolutely financial systems of the business sector. This unmistakable arrangement of business sector reliance implies that the necessities of rivalry and benefit amplification are the basic standards of life. Due to those tenets, Free enterprise is a framework particularly headed to enhance the efficiency of labour by specialised means. Most importantly, it is a framework in which the main part of society's work is finished by workers with no properties of their own, who are obliged to offer their work power in return for a pay with a specific end goal to access the method forever and of work itself. During the time spent supplying the requirements and needs of society, Specialists are, in the meantime, and indispensable.